So the talk is Python load balancer 0 to 1 million requests per second. It's by Abhishek. Abhishek is an undergrad in IIIT. He's working in robustest R&D team where he has built a custom load balancer for robust. Thank you. Um, can you guys see me at the back? Yeah. Um, so this is uh, my talk. It's a Python load balancer which I custom built uh, this summer in a company called Robustest. Uh, before I get into anything, I really want to tell you guys what an honor it is to present my work in front of you all. Uh, this is my first uh, talk and my first conference, and I'm really glad to share this moment with you all. Um, before we get into anything, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a fourth year student at IIIT Hyderabad. Uh, I'm doing a dual degree course, so I'll be uh, uh, passing out in 2017 with an MS degree. Uh, my Areas of uh, research interest lie in NLP, basically, but uh, I, I've done some other projects also. Um, I'm part of the Language Technology Research Center in IIIT. And uh, my other interests uh, include, uh, well, football. And I'm, I'm a center forward for my uh, uh, team in IIIT. And uh, I'm also part of the organizing committee of uh, an adventure club of IIIT Hyderabad. Well, uh, the world technical expertise I have is I have uh, done a few uh, open source contributions. I have uh, uh, done a few internships for various companies. And I've done a few personal projects for myself. And uh, well, this came about uh, last summer when I was working uh, with a company called Robust Test. And uh, that's where we built the load balancer. Um, before, uh, before the summer, I actually had little or no idea to what the load balancer is. I did not know. How, I, I, the term itself was alien to me. Uh, only when I started building it did I realize its vast and very necessary applications. Uh, now I must warn you that this is not a technical talk. I will not be getting into technical deta details of it because it's still under development. Uh, but I will, uh, I will uh, surely make sure that I uh, convey as much information as possible. Um, so what do you get when you hear the term load balancer? Anybody? Have you guys used a load balancer at all? or? Uh, Sharing server loads, yeah. Anybody else? Have you used a load balancer before? Have you heard the concept? Well, as he said, uh, it's well uh, when you hear load balancer, it's something. Well, it balances load. That's all it does. A load balancer balances load. A load balancer balances uh, load in such a way that it is distributed among all the different computing resources. Here he said that it balances load among servers. The computing resources need not necessarily always be servers because. Um, Many computing components uh, can be there uh, as uh, the servers or, uh, or other computers, uh, computer clusters, network links, uh, disk drives, anything. The, computer, uh, the computing resources could be anything, and the load balancer would uh, share resources among all these. I mean, uh, would distribute workload among all these. Uh, it aims, aims to optimize resource use, uh, maximize throughput, and minimize response time, and avoid overuse of a single resource. Um, the load balancer is intelligent in some sense. It uh, aims to distribute the workload in such a way that it optimizes the entire system. It makes sure that uh, no single use, uh, a single resource, uh, a single resource gets overused, and it minimizes the uh, entire response time of the application. Uh, using multiple components increases reliability and availability. Well, uh, this is true because well, your burden on one single component reduces because you have multiple components uh, taking care of your uh, entire application. So the burden on one single component reduces. Therefore, the the entire uh, application becomes more uh, available, more responsive, and more reliable to you. Um, well, load balancers uh, have multiple different applications, and uh, this is the well the basic architecture of how a load balancer normally looks like. Uh, but they come up with uh, different applications, different techniques, and I would uh, go on to show you uh, what load balancers are there and what different um, uh, applications they they give you. So here is a typical architecture of a load balancer. So you have a load balancer which is communicating with multiple backend servers, and uh, there are multiple clients connecting to your load balancer to communicate with the server. Um, now, when I began this project uh, uh, in the summer, uh, the, the way we all start coding is we have our local host. We have our load balancer running on local host. We have our servers running on local host. And we have different ports assigned to them. So that's basically how I want to explain to you guys also, because I want to give you a small glimpse of the experience of uh, how uh, the, my summer was spent. So here you see that the load balancer was on port 8080. And uh, there are multiple servers, so one to server four running on ports 8081, 8082, 8083, and 8084. So now for a client to communicate with any of these servers, he has to go through the load balancer. 
what we do is the, the address of these servers are not made public. The only thing that is made public is the address of the load balancer and the port number of the load balancer. So if a client wishes to communicate with a uh, server, he has to go through the load balancer. So here the client will say that, okay, hey, uh, uh, patch me through to S1, or uh, you know, he wants to connect to S1. So then the load balancer, what he does is, uh, well, he's intelligent. So he knows, the load balancer knows uh, where the uh, S1 is and what address it's located at. So the, uh, it manages to uh, create a session between the, the client and the server S1. Um, as I told you, there are many different applications for a uh, load balancer. Here are some of the uh, load balancers which are there currently in the market right now, and uh, they all perform exceedingly well in their task. But, well, what else do they offer? Because uh, the thing is, uh, when you're always creating, uh, when you're creating an application, you need to make sure that it caters to your needs. Uh, here, right now, for example, here, HA proxy, balance ng, F5, uh, all these load balancers perform exceedingly well in the task of load balancing, but what else do they give? So HA proxy, for example, uh, uh, it can give you a HTTP or TCP um, uh, proxying for web-based applications. So that's what it offers. And then F5 gives you a virtual load balancer along with the standard load balancer it comes with. And uh, ATEN, for example, it uh, offers URL manipulations. And Nginx uh, uh, gives you uh, the ability to configure uh, weights for each server. So as I said, like there are multiple uh, applications for uh, your load balancer, and you can tweak it to uh, fit your needs. Um, uh, so when we go on to the uses of uh, the load balancer, we see that uh, there are multiple uses for, uh, for uh, such an entity. Because even uh, before the summer, actually, I had uh, no idea to what uh, to expect or to what to build or what to, uh, how to do this, how to go about this. But when I started using it, I realized how how important it is in, a, in any growing industry, in, in any application. So here uh, we see that it increases security. How does it increase security? You could see that the client could not directly connect to any of the backend servers because the address is not made public. To connect to any one server, he has to go through the load balancer. Therefore, uh, in some sense, you're, you know, you're pro prohibiting dire direct connections to the servers. So for any client to connect to a server, he has to go through the load balancer. That way you're increasing security of the uh, entire application. It improves performance of the entire system by distributing traffic. Uh, the performance of the entire system is, uh, uh, well, it's increased because uh, you're reducing the burden on the servers which are managing and maintaining the application level traffic. By reducing the burden on those servers, you make sure that your entire system is more responsive, more available. So that's how it improves the performance of the system. Now, it makes the entire system more fault tolerant. Uh, this is an important key concept, uh, actually, which you want because um, if you, the load balancer ensures that there is no one uh, single point of failure. If you have a server which is unresponsive or which has uh, broken down for some reason, uh, and, uh, you, uh, and now the entire system is at a collapse, but uh, with a load balancer, all it has to do is it has to distribute the traffic among various other servers in the pool. Uh, therefore, uh, thereby, it's, the entire system becomes more fault tolerant. Uh, here are some of the examples of like existing load balancers and the statistics they give. Uh, the entire traffic which is coming into the application is depicted by the green line, and uh, the server one and server two are depicted by the blue line and the red line respectively. Uh, as you can see, um, the sum total at any point, uh, let's say 5 a.m., 6 a.m., uh, is, uh, is equal to the total traffic coming in. So the load balancer is distri distributing its load to server one and server two. Uh, now you may be wondering why server one gets way more than server two. It's probably because server one is bigger, you know, or maybe because, like I told you, uh, like I told in Nginx, you give more weight to server one, so it's preferred more than server two. Probably because server one has a lesser response time than server two, so you prefer server one more than server two. And uh, one more key concept to grasp is that uh, it is not necessary that the load balancer all it has to do is to balance load, because um, uh, here you have this hourly mail statistics which a load balancer gives is uh, it's blocked some blocked some uh, mail because it says it's spam blocked some mail because it says it's virus and it allows some other mail so it also allows a moderation of the entire traffic as such so whatever data is being uh, uh, put through the load balancer you can also moderate it therefore you can use you can tweak your load balancer to like fit your needs and this is exactly what we did at robust test because we had very specific needs we had very specific goal and we had to, uh, that's why we had to build the load balancer from scratch to uh, fit in, um, in our environment. 
Well, here are, uh, well, the benefits of using a load balancer. Scalability, that is the most important, the most foremost thing for any uh, growing application. As your application demand increases, uh, you want uh, to be able to satisfy all your customers. How do you do that? You can just add new servers to your server pool. So when you, um, all you have to do for your scalability of your application is that you have to add uh, servers to your server pool and just update your load balancer. Now it's going to start uh, sending uh, traffic to the new server in the server pool. Um, it improves, the server, uh, improves uh, server utilization and maximizes availability. Well, uh, this is because, well, no server uh, is a small server. That's what, that's what the load balancer says. It's because uh, no matter how small or how large your server is, your load balancer is going to make sure that uh, all the traffic is being distributed among these multiple servers depending, proportionate to their sizes. So uh, if it improves the entire server utilization and maximizes the availability of the system. Uh, load balancer can do other things than rewriting traffic. This I've already mentioned uh, because um, I've told you about uh, balance ng and uh, um, f5 and all those load balancers. Uh, apart from that, I do not know if you guys have heard, but you might have seen this project called Mantrid, uh, probably on GitHub. Nobody? Oh well, there's a uh, there's another load balancer project called Mantrid upon GitHub. Well, what it offers is it offers you a place, uh, it offers you a, a scenario where you can hold the client when the back backend servers restart. So you can see how this is useful. And uh, also right now I'm always talking about, uh, well, servers, but in truth, well, uh, the load balancer can communicate with any computing resource as such. So uh, uh, two years ago when I was, uh, when I had another internship uh, with another company, I, uh, we had to do um, a disaster recovery or a risk management kind of a, application. So what we had to do was we had to mimic uh, every I.O. operation on one device, on one uh, disk to another disk. So here also a load balancer would come into play because if you, um, whatever um, I.O. operations you're performing on one disk, all you have to do is you have to mimic it to the other disk. So if you're performing anything through the load, load balancer, the load balancer will be capable of uh, copying it and putting it through to the other disk, thereby creating a backup disk. So in case of a disaster, if you lose one disk, you always have a backup disk. Uh, and also, you guys might have heard that, uh, well, a couple of years ago when uh, Michael Jackson died, uh, Google uh, redirected all, so all queries regarding his, uh, his death uh, to an error page saying that, well, your request looks like a DDoS attack. It, it was because, well, the, there were so many people pouring in for this information, so many people asking uh, why, uh, what was the cause of, what was the reason for Michael Jackson's uh, death and so on. So, so you can see that even a, a load balancer is even capable of uh, doing such tasks like you know you can uh, figure out if uh, there are more uh, there's more requests coming in and so it could also figure out that your system could probably be under attack so that way also increase security in that sense um so um, to get into uh, my project um well the, th the thing is um we had to build the load balancer from scratch uh, because it we had to fit into our needs so I'll be explaining the entire project as a whole, and uh, I'll be talking about how we uh, needed the load balancer, and then I'll get into the challenges we faced by building one. Um, in the beginning, when we started the project, we did not actually even know that we needed the load balancer, because uh, initially we just thought that we were just going to, uh, we didn't need load balancer, we are just going to do some direct connections. But uh, when we started building only, we realized that uh, the load balancer was very essential, it was a very necessary part of the entire application. Uh, so the so to understand this, I let me go through the application as such. So this is uh, this is Robust Test. This is the application which uh, was developed uh, in Robust Test, uh, the company itself. So uh, this basically it offers you a web interface, an interface where you can test your mobile applications on uh, the real Android devices. So these devices which you see here, they are real devices which are connected to the uh, server back there. So what you do is when you're um, how to test your uh, test your application is you upload an application uh, or you uh, choose from a list of applications that are given already and then you choose the mobile device which is present here. So once you're done with that, you get into, a, uh, get into another page where you're given a small screen which shows uh, uh, emulation of the phone and which is a real device which is connected to mind you. So it's a real device what you're going to be testing on. So, and you can control these with your, uh, with your mouse and with your keyboard and you have statistics based on like memory usage, CPU usage and network and etc. Um, so what we have here is, uh, um, you may have all developed Android applications or may not have developed Android applications. But you know that um, when you develop an application, 
you develop it for your phone, you develop it for, uh, you know, it works on your friend's phone, it works on your phone, but not necessarily that it works on all the phones that are present there. So, well, this gives you a, a place for you to, like, well, test it out on multiple different phones uh, so that you ensure that, well, your, your application is working. Um, so, well, you might, may have figured out, like, where the load balancer comes into play in uh, this scenario because uh, it's going to be the one which is going to be communicating with all the mobile devices in the back end. So, uh, when um, I was not part of the front end team, I was only part of the back end team. So, uh, what I essentially did was I had my load balancer communicating with multiple mobile devices at the back end, and I would uh, test it with a VNC viewer or something on my uh, on my on my computer. So, what I needed basically was uh, I had multiple mobile devices at the back end, and they were all running a uh, Droid VNC server or VMLite server, which is basically a, well, it's a, a Droid VNC server is open source. If you guys want to look at it, uh, please go ahead and look at it. So the uh, Droid VNC server or VMLite server, which was running on the mobile devices, and uh, you had a VNC viewer running on your computer. Now, if you wanted to emulate the um, uh, phone on your screen, uh, you just had to like uh, give it the uh, the uh, where the uh, the address of the phone, basically the address and the port number of the phone. Um, well, in my project, uh, the, there were, we had multiple backend uh, mobile devices were connected to the load balancer. Now, the load balancer had an internal database uh, uh, telling the phone type and the various uh, um, uh, the addresses of each mobile device. Uh, for each uh, client to, to connect to one mobile device, he had to give in the phone option and the cookie. I'll tell you the reason for a cookie in a while. So, uh, basically, he had to give in uh, the phone option. And then what the load balancer would do is it would look through the internal database, and then it would patch it through to the mobile device. Uh, initially, when I did the load balancer project, uh, I, was, uh, I was confused because all I really thought was that the load balancer, the initial the, and the only uh, contribution to it or the, or the, on the whole system was that it was hiding the information of the backend servers. So initially, uh, I mean, you guys must have also figured out that probably it's going to be acting as a server and a client. That is, a, it's going to have a server subpart and a client subpart. So that it's going to act like a server to the client and then act like a client to the server and then uh, pass the information back. But this is not true, because uh, that means you're actively involving your uh, uh, load balancer in the communication channel. When you're doing that, uh, when another client comes in and asks for uh, a request, uh, the load balancer is uh, it's busy with the initial client already. So uh, that's why uh, what we decided to do was we established a session between the client and the server. So now the load balancer is out of the communication channel, and he's able to take requests from, for like, uh, from other requests from other clients. Uh, so here, what we did was we had uh, a request coming in, and uh, so depending on what the phone type uh, he uh, the client chooses for, uh, the the load balancer makes a create session between uh, the client and uh, the mobile device, and so you can emulate the mobile device on your computer screen, and you can uh, do whatever you want, or whatever you want. It's, it's fine. So, uh, but the reason for the cookie was we had to create a sticky session implementation. That was uh, that was also that's what we wanted in our load balancer. Because um, the ap entire application was uh, built on a, a per device R billing, so when when you're connected to the device and when you lose the, when you uh, close the uh, close your browser and you come back to it, you you you're essentially going to be connected back to the same device, because uh, uh, well there was a per device R billing as I said, so uh, uh, and also the fact that when you are connected with one device, uh, the other um, clients cannot connect to that device because it's in use with your with uh, with one client already. So uh, when that was happening, the internal database had to be updated, saying that, well, this device is being used. So, well, I can't connect to it right now, and uh, so on. Um, so this is how we, uh, well, basically built it. And uh, this is the basic gist of the project. And well, if you guys have any questions or queries, please feel free to ask me. I'll answer to the best of my requests, I mean, best of my knowledge. Uh, sorry? And, uh, and uh, I didn't a device. Sorry, I didn't get it. A mobile device. So, uh, well, you have Droid VNC server. It's a, you have something called a Droid VNC server or VMLite server, which is running on the mobile devices. And uh, what you have is uh, essentially you will be parsing your uh, uh, argument based on well, which phone type you want to connect to. And you have all standard libraries, you socket, uh, or OS, RE. That's all I used for the project. It was all uh, those only, being HTTP request and make a session between the client and the device. That's uh, all. How, how do you, I mean, if there are, uh, Five instances of a device, and you want to connect to. Uh, I mean, two of them are idle, and three of them are busy. How do you route between? Sorry. Uh, how do you route between them? I, I didn't get you. Uh, if 
If two of them are idle and uh, and uh, three of them are busy and a new request comes in, yeah, the database is always updated, right? So suppose two two are uh, busy right now, so the database is uh, as soon as your uh, your the uh, your uh, mobile phone is in use, the database is updated. So now when the new request comes in, it says that the data is the mobile device is active, so it can't participate in your uh, calls. Oh, so it's an actual database itself. Yeah, it's an actual database. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, you you give the IP address of the uh, load balancer rather than the servers yeah, to yeah, the server. clients. Yeah. So let's suppose a client is sending a request to my blog, yeah. and uh, there are ten servers uh, in the back end uh, hosting my blog, and okay. a load balancer is balancing the request. Okay. So a client sends the request to my uh, blog, and the load balancer uh, forwards the request back to one of the servers. Yeah. How does the load balancer know that it has to again send the request back to the client? Yeah, exactly. So that that that's what the, the mm. what that's what happens is that when the client when a, when the load balancer gets a request from the client, and now the load balancer figures out that which server it has to done that, that till there it's done. So after that's done, it establishes a session between the client and the load uh, and the server. Now when you establish a session again, the 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 address and everything of the of the server or anything is not uh, given out. So security is still maintained. It's just a server session. It's, uh, it's also there. Client and the and the backend server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, okay. So I had a question regarding uh, if a load balancer goes down, how does? Yeah, uh, that's that's. Uh, you I have mean, to make sure that the load balancer is always active. Okay. So we have to. That is that is basically the uh, stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question. Yeah. It's, it might be an off topic, but I wanted to know. How do you implement? I mean, if I have a use case where a client needs to always present in one particular Sorry. server, Sorry, I, can't hear you. I mean, there is a use case where a client has to be connected to a particular server. Yeah. Okay. But uh, there are many requests coming up, and you want to do a round robin. But yeah. Uh, along with that, you need to have an IP hash. So Sorry. IP hash. Okay. IP hash along with round ro robin. Okay. So the, how does that happen? I mean, is it? Uh, I've not I've not explored such options, but I do know that uh, there are many, ma multiple algorithms which uh, the lo low balancers follow, like round robin technique or least connections time, least response time. But I've not explored such options. Okay. Hey, can you able to hear me? Sorry. Yeah, I can hear you. So, uh, have you faced this? Uh, no, no, no. We didn't do any of those because we didn't have to maintain. We just had like, uh, you know, it connected to each server and we each connected to each mobile device and back. We didn't. Uh, there was no re uh, reason for us to uh, care for DDoS or anything of this. Anything of this. The thing is, uh, the thing is, it won't be there in our case because when when one, one mobile device is connected, another mobile device, uh, another server cannot, another client cannot even request for that mobile device because it's already. It is yeah, 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 yeah. But my load balancer does not work there. My load balancer is uh, behind that. Uh, yeah, not in the application service. Yeah. So why did you need to? Um why did you need to develop your own uh, load balancer? Wh what didn't work with the existing yeah. ones? And, uh, yeah, because uh, we also tried. Actually, we actually started with Mantred. We thought we'll put Mantred in, or we'll uh, because th that was open source, and we yeah. thought we'll uh, use Mantred as uh, uh, our base. But the thing was, we had to uh, handle data of uh, like the mobile phone and uh, what was th that data had to be handled. That data was not handled, so we had to develop our own, uh, and we also had to implement sticky session. And so we did that. So sticky sessions are, uh, give, I mean, are handled by many of the load balancers. Many of the load the balancers. Yeah, load yeah. balancers. Uh, but we have to handle the data, the or data like part. the data of the phone, what phone gives and what the VNC viewer gives back to the. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So to manage the response time of uh, like the load balancer, do you use any type type of caching to store like static content or something no, no, like no. that? No, we don't. Uh, res uh, response time. Well, it depends on well the server response time. Uh, if like if the server is re more responsive, that means your load balancer is going to uh, choose. I mean, you can choose uh, so that if you have a least response time protocol as your uh, in, um, primary uh, algorithm that your load balancer follows, that means that it would uh, it would choose a server which has lesser response time from the others. We did not uh, do anything particular to this because all our uh, 
phones are and any particular algorithm you follow to uh, distribute the load among the servers no we are not exactly we are, this is not exactly a load balance we are not exactly distributing a load in this no we are uh, sending request based on which phone type they want to access okay. so there is no uh, balance of load as such but then we have to we need the load balance nevertheless for uh, distributing okay. the traffic thank you I, w I wanted to understand what design things that you used in this one, like for example, for reusing connections or how, you know, taking the member the connection footprint to be very low. Something Sorry? like that. You so you are your your uh, service or whatever this uh, this yeah. proxy thing is yeah, is facing the clients, right? Yeah. And uh, you, so it's it's kind of a single point, and where ev every connection All the would converge. come through there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you? Any any design thing that you uh, use? We had different threads running for uh, different uh, well, connections and so on. Uh, I can't get into the technical details because the, uh, it's under development right now and uh, uh, it's a company yeah. product. So. Yeah, so it's okay. Uh, what I asked about like design techniques, like for yeah. example, for for example, did you use socket reuse? Yeah, or o o OS socket are actually it's very basic uh, socket you programming. Do something for reducing the footprint taking or uh, taken. So you have to res respond back very fast. Right? Yeah, yeah, That's the main goal. Yeah, yeah. Did you do anything? We just uh, we just implement session between those two, and it was pretty responsive. It was pretty fast anyway, so we didn't mind after that. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. File this for load balancing. No, probably we're, we're going to explore. It's, uh, it's still in a development phase, I, as I told you. So there's so much as SP uh, I've done, I've told you. Uh, this I did uh, probably in two, three weeks. We've, uh, we finished this. Uh, we finished how much ever we could. And then, yeah, so that's all I had to say. Nginx, no, no, no. This is all custom built. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you guys.